And you know, I, I know many of our listeners are from the traditional real estate world and they're definitely interested in many of these episodes because of us covering the cutting edge of technology. It's not that far away though, in my view. I mean, if anyone has children, it's crazy. Like, you know, I, I, I got kids, right? And, and my, my seven, eight year old are just, every day they want to tune into Roblox and they've got all their friends who are tuning in at like 7 p.m. and they're playing games in the virtual, you know, you can call it a metaverse if you want. It's not quite decentralized, it's more centralized. But anyway, they're, they're going in and they're playing in these virtual environments. Um, the power of AR, um, I was recently thinking about getting a dog and I live in this, you know, for anyone who's watching this video on YouTube, I, I live in this um, uh, two story uh, or, or two floor condo and it's difficult to get a dog because you're in an apartment condo building. And I was going on Google and I was just browsing for uh, potential dogs I could buy and I typed it in and Google lets you place a life size version of that dog in your home. I mean, I used to give examples of you're buying something on Amazon and you're not sure how it's going to look and I do that frequently. I'm not sure how it's gonna look. I can place it on my desk, I can see it. But this was just an emotional connection. Like, oh, look at that. I also ended up placing a giant panda in my living room, which was, you know. <laughs> but but we adults become goofy creatures when we can play with uh, the virtual environment. Some of our most conservative suit wearing, no offense to suit wearing people, by the way, half of our listeners have to wear a suit because that's how we do business in real estate, right? <laughs> but grown men, grown adults, grown women, you know, can become big kids when they're placed in the metaverse. and they don't have to have their real identity. They can just let go and they can place objects and have fun. So to, to end up, give me the most fun example you can give me of what's happening on your platform. And if it's not your platform, maybe the metaverse overall. Yeah, so, you know, I think um, one thing to uh, also kind of uh, expound on a bit is, you know, as you said, there's other virtual worlds out there. Sandbox is a really amazing one, Decentraland. At Superworld, what we've seen is we're kind of this gateway, right? And so a lot of people don't know about the meta, you know, the metaverse or what that means or what AR, VR, how did that get into their lives or AI or Web3. But what they find is they know places they live and, and work or, you know, go out or stadiums. And so they get a wallet, they put some ether in it and they go buy land in Superworld. Now they're ready to, you know, to your question, you know, create things. In, in, in Superworld, get into AR and VR, maybe get into other NFTs, maybe go into another virtual world. And we're very, we're very close to Sandbox as well. So, you know, we have a very strong linkage there and to Animoca, um, which is the company that owns Sandbox as well. Um, and, and so what we're building is this kind of pathway to these other places that people want to go, but we're focused on the real world. And so to answer your question, I think one of the coolest things that we're, you know, we're working on are things that we've done is, you know, is is really placing, um, you know, content in real world locations that exists also in the real world. So as an example of that, at Miami Art Week, you know, Art Basel um, in, in uh, Miami in the fall, you know, we were covered in the New York Times because artists were able to put their artwork uh, in real world locations, you know, the convention center on the street, you know, all over the place alongside physical works of art um, that art goers were there to see as part of Miami Art Week. And so again, an example of you know, someone who's wanting to, again, build a livelihood as an artist, but they're not able to get into Miami Art Week or they're not even able to make it to town, but they're able to utilize Superworld to place art alongside some of the top artists in the world. And all you need to do is go to our map or go to, you know, our application and, and you're able to view that art and you can even buy it virtually, whether it's structured as an NFT or structured on a website uh, and you're buying it and then mailing it to your house. And so I think one of the coolest things that we've been focused focused on, again, and I gave you an example of, um, you know, the, the 3D yacht. I've given you an example of Barbados building a, you know, a, a, an embassy in Superworld. But I would, I would say that, you know, to conclude that question, you know, I'd say one of the coolest things was in the Amazon jungle, we created digital art and tribes who'd been at war for 500 years put that art in their native habitat in the Amazon jungle. And you could view their artwork from anywhere in the world. And we did that to 
to educate people about what's happening in the Amazon. And, you know, this week, um, you know, and this month, as you guys have known, there, there's a you know, very terrible invasion of Ukraine that's gone on, right? And people around the world don't know the gravity of what's happening there. And so being able to visualize this types of scenes in your own city, in your own downtowns, and really be able to have this empathy with wow. what's happening in the world there is also a very, you know, powerful way to educate people uh, of, you know, what's actually happening in other parts of the world. So, you know, just some few ever, few examples, um, but I, yeah. I think this technology is just a start. It is, you know, what one, um, well, I, I published an article on entrepreneur.com that got quite a lot of um, uh, traffic and, you know, created a buzz. And my view was quite strong. My view was that the metaverse is being misused as a term. It's confusing real estate people. You know, I like to be cynical at times, right? Um, but Supermode is really legitimately the first company I've seen that does a good job at bridging the concept of metaverse and real estate. Otherwise, prior to knowing about you guys, my view was very much like look, the disconnected worlds, that a metaverse is a very gaming entertainment centric world and the parallels to real estate fall apart and it's misleading and confusing people and attracting the wrong type of people. I'm not dismissing metaverse. I love the metaverse. Okay. Um, but speaking about fun ideas, here's, a, here's an idea. I'm sure you've thought of it. You know, it's, it's like a business idea or a future idea, right? And I didn't come up with it now. I came up with it when I was a kid. I used to love Grand Theft Auto. So mm. love playing GTA and mm. GTA would be based on locations like LA. And I'd always wished, why can't it be based on my local neighborhood? Right? And what comes to my mind as we've been speaking is, wow, when you talk about these unlimited number of filters, what if there were filters like games? Because this came from gaming with Pokemon Go, right? Yep. What if you could have unlimited versions of Pokemon Go, but it could be the GTA version. It could be, you know, the Pokemon Go version or whatever other version you want to create. Um, and that's gaming. You gave an example of Ukraine here, which is powerful. If I want to discover what's happening right now in Ukraine in a certain area, where would I go? I mean, the satellite imagery I have access to is out of date and is proprietary and very well guarded sometimes. I'm not going to go there physically. That's dangerous. I have to go on Twitter and I have to browse. Whereas if you could go to that very location you're concerned about, any number of people could create filters and show you what's happening. And to me, that's where the potential of the metaverse comes to life. Surely it's been easy to dismiss the metaverse, um, especially for folks that are very brick and mortar focused, right? Which is why I love prop tech. It's you know, the, the cutting edge of real estate. But there seems to be a lot of potential real world applications and we just gave a few that. You know, any concluding comments on that? You know, I, you're 100% right. Uh, and I think that is definitely um, a, a, a very powerful aspect of, um, you know, what we're creating here is the ability to, again, discover content in the places where that content natively, you know, sits um, and be able to think about it um, in, in, a, in a locational type of perspective as opposed to, you know, browsing. A, uh, a list on a web page or looking for videos with keywords, right? If we're moving to the internet of locations, it'd be nice to be able to go to the location and, you know, find what you're looking for. And that's very native to how we work as humans. How we are. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you look it, around. it really is too, by the way, one final analogy for memory techniques. A, a lot of people will sometimes visualize a journey they're going on. Like they'll take their journey every day that they go on and they'll place random objects and each object might represent a number. People have used this memory technique to memorize insane sequences of numbers. And that's just numbers as an example, right? So our brain is structured in this way. And so technology needs to meet us where we are and where our brain physiology is until we're able to create, you know, crazy DNA version robots of ourselves. For the next hundred years, at least, this seems to be a great opportunity. Well, look, it's been a pleasure speaking with you, Rish. How can people reach you? And uh, is there any type of person you would like to connect with? We have a lot of listeners. Um, if anyone listens to this, who, who would be your ideal person and, and how could they reach you? So I'm, I'm pretty accessible all over. Um, so I'm on Twitter, Rish Lotlikar. I'm on LinkedIn, uh, Rish Lotlikar. Um, those are probably, or Instagram, you know, same name. We have a website, superworldapp.com. You can find me there. Um, and, you know, again, I, I think that your uh, audience is very interesting for us um, because, you know, I've, I've spoken at uh, several real estate conferences. I'm actually speaking at uh, Georgetown 
uh, next month to their the real estate business school, uh, their, the Steers uh, part of the real estate division of their school of business there. Um, and the real estate industry is uh, very interested in what we're doing. I have a, you know so many inbound uh, requests from real estate agents who want to get into virtual real estate and the applications to the real world. We have a number of prop tech investors already invested in Superworld, and you know for me it's it's very important to have that dialogue with your audience because um, that's kind of how we can learn, you know, what it is, are, what are the challenges of this space? Um, what are people, you know, concerned about um, for the future of the industry? Um, what are their hopes and aspirations? What are ways that we can build the platform um, that will ameliorate people's uh, livelihoods in the industry um, in terms of real estate development, in terms of brokerage, sales, agencies, you know, et cetera. And, and so for me, you know, I, I would love to have uh, your audience or anyone who understands the mission of what we're doing to get involved in the platform, to help us build and also help us understand, you know, um, the best ways to kind of um, build Superworld so we can, again, uh, empower uh, people in your industry and people in general. And again, our mission is to build a better world. So we're always down to, you know, figure out ways that, um, you know, your audience might have to, to do that. So I would love that. Thank you. Thank you so much for coming on the show, Rish. Yeah, thanks so much, Zane. It's a pleasure and it's an honor to be here. So thanks again.